And so now we do A Course in Miracles Workbook Lesson 124. Now this is, again, a fundamental lesson in understanding. And if you get this lesson, you put the book down and you live the rest of your life chopping wood, fetching water, feeding the kids in a happy state of awareness. Because if you can remember, become a member of God himself, once again, knowingly, not conceptually, not theoretically, not another academic construct or a group activity where you sing, get in a circle and sing Kumbaya, how much you love God or Jesus, whoever you love, but truly embrace it, completely become it, which you can only do through silent stillness and the practice of gratitude where you abide in the self, in that silent stillness, in the peace of God, which you are. This world will never, ever grab your attention again. Like I've said, don't detach, don't push away from it, don't run away from it. You can't detach the world, your body, mind, all of it's happening in your dreaming mind. Be non-attached. Have no expectation. Realize you're connected to all of it. All of it's mirroring you back at you. And from that day forward, there's no more compromise. There's no compromise. You, your, your no is a gentle no, but firm nevertheless. And your yes is a joyous acceptance of being. You will no longer participate in activities that don't serve your highest ideal, your highest good. And yes, you may still feel compelled or inspired to create or to help others. But it comes from a loving inspiration. It doesn't come from a desire to be something. People that help others very often do it because they love the idea of themselves helping others. And you'll know them by their words and deeds because they're the ones that tell everybody how wonderful they are by helping others. If you truly become a Francis of Assisi, you do it silently and you serve in silence and you serve in gratitude, the gratitude for being able to be in a position to serve, which is a glorious position. If you're able to serve, that means that you have no need for self, the little self. Let me remember I am one with God. I am one with God, one with God. Today, we will again give thanks, gratitude, for our identity, capital I, in God. Our identity is in God. For our identity is God. Our DNA is God's DNA. Our home is safe. We've never left. Protection guaranteed in all we do. Power and strength available to all, to us, in all our undertakings. Why? Because the essence of what we are is God's essence. We can fail in nothing. And if you're failing in something, it's because it's an illusionary body-mind construct of the ego, and you're doing it to try and acquire something. When you're being yourself knowingly, it's the sharing of yourself. And how can you fail in sharing what is you, what is yours, what you have? You can't fail to share what is yours, bearing in mind that you only share with those that are willing, if you're going to do it from an understanding point of view, with those that are willing to listen. You don't go out and solicit and sell the idea of salvation. Those are for churches. Churches do that because they need the money in order to buy nice cars and build nice buildings and whatever they do and pay salaries to the employees that are too lazy to go out and serve. Everything we touch takes on a shining light because we are light itself that blesses and heals. And remember, true healing is the healing of the mind, not of the body, although that may come to as as a service to your fractured body minds in projected at one with God and with the universe, because the universe is the activity of our dreaming mind. So the universe is our mind. We go our way rejoicing with the thought that God himself goes everywhere with us. Again, like I've said, it's not like he's walking with you. You often see these pictures of Jesus and you walking in the sand. No, you're not walking anywhere. You go in God. Never leave. All of it is in God. The entire universe is in God. Well, the entire universe is in the, the dreamer's mind, and the dreamer's mind, the dreamer is in God. So everything is in God. How holy are our minds? And everything we see reflects the holiness within the mind at one 
with God and with itself. How easily do errors disappear and death give place to everlasting life? No more fear of death. I see so many Course in Miracles students talk a really strong non-dual concept or a love of God concept, and yet still fear the inevitable, which is the dying of the body-mind. Our shining footprints point the way to truth, for God is our companion as we symbolically walk the world a little while, or a little while longer. And those who come to follow will recognize the way because the light we carry stays behind, just like the light that Jesus carried stayed behind as the Christ light. And so as we become Christ's, in other words, the recognition of our true self, as we join with the Christ mind, the mind lights a little bit more with each one that lights itself, enlightens itself to the light we are. And so the light we carry stays behind and, and, and yet still remains with us as we walk on. And we're really walking nowhere. We're just, the distance between you and God is the distance between you and your heart. It's within you. What we receive is our eternal gift to those who follow after, because we're sharing it to oneself. Everything that follows after is still a fracture of our dreaming mind. So it's all us. Every character, all 8 billion on this planet is the I am, is the dreaming mind's activity. So it's the eternal gift to those who follow after. And to those who went before or stayed with us a little while. And God, who loves us with the equal love in which we were created. We were created as love, in love. We are the love of God. That's what we are. God extended himself. Love, God, love, extended himself. And we are the extension. We are its creation. And so in equal love with which we were created, smiles on us as if he had a, you know, a mouth to smile, to symbolic, and offers us the happiness we gave. Why? Because it's the sharing of our joyous self with ourselves. Today we will not doubt his love for us, nor question his protection and his care. No meaningless anxiety, which is the trapping of what is anxiety? It's the hoping that something was better, resisting what is, and the disappointment with what's been. That's what anxiety is and fearing that it's going to be worse. Well, if you fear it, it will be, because you, everything we think is a self, uh, uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. No meaningless anxieties can come between our faith, the knowing of ourself, and our awareness of his presence, because his presence is our awareness. His presence is awareness itself. Presence is awareness. The presence of God is awareness, for God is pure energy, pure awareness. We are one with him today in recognition and in remembrance. We feel him in our hearts. We sense him in our hearts. We know him in our hearts. Don't go into, there's not an emotion. The, the, the conscious awareness of God itself, of awareness itself, there's no emotion to it. Emotion is the realm of ego. So the feeling is the knowing of ourself as that joyous essence. Our minds contain his thoughts. Our eyes behold Behold his loveliness in all we look upon. So we start to see the echo for God in everything we look upon. Today we see only the loving and the lovable because behind all appearances, the essence, the I am essence, the Christ mind essence, the shared being with God essence. We see it in appearances of pain and pain gives way to peace. We see it in the frantic and sad and the distressed, the lonely and afraid who are restored to the tranquility and peace of mind in which they were created. And we see it in the dying and the dead as well, restoring them to life because what died wasn't real and what remains is the eternal life, the eternal extension of life itself. Life is God. All this we see because we saw it first within ourselves because unless we know it and see it first and recognize it within our very essence as our essence of ourself, we will not be able to recognize it in our dreaming mind as what appears to be others, people, places, things, and events. It's be thyself knowingly, and thus you know yourself as the dreaming self who's dreamt up all of this. And therefore, all of it is part of ourself, all of it. Even this hand 
is divine energy appearing as a hand. No miracles can ever be denied to those who know they are one with God. One with God. No thought of theirs, but has the power to heal all forms of suffering. Because of this transcendence of form. In anyone, in times gone by, and times as yet to come. And easily, and as easily as in the ones who walk besides them now. Their thoughts are timeless. Because time is not real. And apart from distance, because space, space-time distance is not real. As apart from time. We join in this awareness as we say that we are one with God. Aware that we are that oneness awareness. For in these words we say as well that we are saved and healed that we can save and heal accordingly, for we heal but ourselves, all of it, the entire end of it. And what is the healing? It's the returning to its self knowingly, the disappearance of the body, minds, the world, the universe. We have accepted, and we now would give. Give acceptance. Give unconditioned, no condition, no judgment, for we would keep, keep the gifts our Father gave, Today we would experience ourselves at one with him so that the world may share our recognition of reality, God's immortal reality, which is ours. In our experience, the world is freed. In our experience as body minds, while we still abide a little longer, the world is freed from affecting us or anything else. As we deny our separation from our Father, it is healed along with us, for the world is within us. Peace be to you today. Secure your peace by practicing awareness as you are one with your creator, as he is with you. How do you practice awareness? Abide in silent stillness. Let no thought interrupt. And so then offer gratitude and offer gratitude and offer gratitude and abide in silent stillness. Go within, you go without. Sometime today, whenever it seems best, devote half an hour to the thought that you are one with God. This is our first attempt at an extended period for which we give no rules nor special words to guide your meditation. We will trust God's voice, capital B, to speak as he sees fit today. Certain he will not fail. Abide with him this half an hour. He will do the rest. Why? The very essence, which is God, is the very essence, which is yourself, which is your soul, which is the very essence of what is true in you. The rest isn't. And that is limitless. And there's nothing it cannot do. It will dissolve the dream in an instant. Your benefit will not be less if you believe that nothing happens. You may not be ready to accept the gain today, yet sometime, somewhere, it will come to you, nor will you fail to recognize it when it dawns with certainty, total clarity upon your mind, on your awareness. This half an hour will be framed in gold symbolic light, with every minute like diamonds set around a mirror that this exercise will offer you. And you will see Christ's face upon it in reflection of your own. Remember, Christ is not the man Jesus. It is the light you are. Christ is yourself, awake in God. The recognition of our shared essence, our shared beingness in God's being. Not being God. It's not a being. It's just energy, beingness, beingness. Perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow, you will see your own transfiguration, the in the glass, this holy offer, this holy half an hour will hold out to you. It's in your awareness. You'll realize something shifted. You'll notice you smiling. The gentleness is gone. You're no longer trying to appease anything. You're no longer listening to the news. You're no longer involved in the world's activity. And so this, this half hour will hold out to you. To look upon yourself, 
When you are ready, you will find it there within your mind and waiting to be found. You will remember then the, the thought which, gave, which you gave this half hour. Thankfully aware that no time was ever better spent. Perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow, you will look into this glass and understand the sinless light you see belongs to you. The loveliness you look on is your own, for you are the light, the love, the kingdom in which God abides. Count this half hour as your gift to God in certainty that his return will be a sense of love you cannot understand, a joy too deep for you to comprehend, a sight too holy for the body's eyes to see. And yet you can be sure Someday, perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow, you will understand and comprehend and see total clarity of being thyself knowingly. Add further jewels to the golden frame that holds the mirror offered you today by offering, by hourly repeating to yourself, let me remember I am one with God at one with all my brothers, fractured parts of myself, and myself, capital L, self, my Christ self, my Holy Son of God self, in everlasting holiness and in peace. And so be it. Amen. So be it. Glory be to, to God, for that is all there is. We'll stop and do some questions now.